Welcome everyone to I Had No Idea. In today's episode, we're going to focus on ambushing your opponents. This is going to be how to play your autoloaders, not just the ones with quick reload times, but all of them. Trust me, this is a good one. Uh, in today's video, you're going to see the Waffentrager Alfie 100, which is the most epic uh, kind of the autoloader, but everything you see in here, you can apply to all the other ones, and I'll tell you why. Let's go. Waffentrager Auf E100. Oh, this is a vehicle which I really kind of miss, but at the same time, I really don't want it back in the game. <laughs> uh, I guess my, quite a lot of you are in the same boat with me, because as much as I enjoy playing the tank because it's hilarious, it is really bad for the game. It's not that it's overpowered, but it's just broken. You can lock up the entire flank by just being there. And if anyone knows you are there, they're not going to push. So uh, for Redshire and for this position, you can see me knocking those trees down. I risk myself getting spotted here, but this is important. On defense, this is going to create a pretty much an impenetrable uh, camouflage for me and the T95. Do this if you're fast enough. Uh, if you can get away doing this uh, before the enemies, oof, before the enemies uh, get to get into position, you are invisible for pretty much the majority of the game. And as I was introducing you to this battle, we have 1,500 damage. <laughs> but this is not specifically about the uh, uh, Waffentrager. This is about ambushing. So what you see me do here is I prepare. A position where I can deal a lot of damage in a very short time to enemies who cross or peek. This is a defense scenario, so focus on that for now. What you need to think about when you have autoloader vehicles, especially ones with not so great armor, like this one for example, is that it's best if the enemies don't know where you are. So. I unfortunately got spotted early on, so the enemies know I am here, uh, but they didn't spot the T95, so whoever decides to do something uh, on this flank is going to regret this heavily. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have quite a lot of support uh, down here on the south, so we have to be patient. Uh, luckily, this tank with its massive reload time uh, allows us to be patient because there is nothing we can do for almost a minute. But back on the subject, we have T10 there. We use the Z command. I highly suggest you start using your Z key. It's not happening enough in the game. Uh, I communicate with the T10, telling him I will support you, and he confirms it back to me. So without using the chat functionality, I now know that he knows I'm going to help him. It's extremely useful, especially if you want to set up a crossfire with a person you don't know. I often uh, play solo without anyone in a platoon. So this is the way I communicate to set up an ambush it's better to have this confirmation that he knows I'm here and he knows I will be helping him because then he can adjust to what he does for that information. It sometimes it can win you a game just you know pressing down the Z on the on your friend friendly and telling him I'll help you out. So do that. But but back on the autoloader sub, uh, subject. What you need to try and do to ambush your opponents is first of all try for them to be unaware of where you are and don't shoot immediately as soon as you can. Try to allow them to make that mistake of going forward so far they can no longer go back. Especially if you have three or four shells, like let's say Kranvan. If you so when you play a Kranvan, for example, on the ridge line, just because you have an impenetrable turret doesn't mean you always have to peek. Sometimes it's best for you to wait for enemies to commit to the play and then go over the ridge line and unload your clip on them. It's just because you don't ha you have this armor on this vehicle doesn't mean you have to uh, always be spotted. Now let's see how see what I do here. I wait for him to go as far as possible before I start shooting. I had a shot earlier on, but I waited enough to be able to put three shells in. If I was in a let's say VZ55. I would wait just enough so I can unload both of my shells. This is the whole idea. Let them commit and then punish. Don't rush your shots because 
you need to make sure you when you play your auto loaders you usually trade something for that uh, magazine so in the case of a crown van you have a very weak hull and you don't have a great gun it's good but it's not great and you don't have great penetration so this is your, your trade-off in vz55 you don't have a great armor or you have a weak spot uh, as a cupola your upper plate is weak uh, your shoulders are weak so you always trade something for those uh, multiple shells so make them count make sure that when you fire you always try to shoot more than one shell this is your the whole point of uh, ambushing vehicles don't think about putting one in just think about where i can unload on them as uh, one of the famous streamers used to say so if you play let's say batshot 25t tier 10 uh, french medium tank you have five shells with quite a long intra clip reload so what you want to plan ahead and do is when you fire try to make sure you can at least put two or probably the best three shells in so every play you make you try and make it enough of a play for a longer period of time not just to you know go in and put one in this is not the point of an auto alert in a bad shot you trade pretty much all of your armor you have none like the best part of your armor is your gun <laughs> uh, so can I get lucky with the Act Tiger? Yes. So two shots in the Act Tiger. Third one maybe. Ah, unlucky bounce, but leopard maybe. Yes. Nice. So full clip out, unloaded, back on reload. 4.4 thousand damage. This is why this vehicle is so broken and shouldn't have been in the game. But it is in the game. So if you're lucky enough to get it uh, for a couple of games, I strongly suggest you maximize uh, your efficiency. Uh, spend all the credits uh, on it uh, if you want to have crazy games if you don't care about it don't uh, but if you want to have some crazy games full gold uh, directives for uh, improved aiming improved aiming module uh, durability uh, because you need to have as many hit points as possible because you will be trading so what you see me do here is i set up another ambush uh, this is not looking great i think we're going to lose this unless i can pull off a miracle um, <laughs> uh, situation here but hey yeah, somebody got either disconnected or just pressed r twice so i got hit once uh, i got unlucky with here but uh, well there is an opportunity to do damage so i do damage one two three and one into the badger and uh, that's it it probably would have been better if i uh, shot the badger uh, but i was already aimed there and to be honest this game's over so I don't think I have another clip in even if I unloaded, unloaded on the Badger uh, concepts here and the uh, Panzer is approaching artillery is uh, able to shoot everywhere this is game over but that pretty much uh, sums it up we have 6.6 thousand damage uh, in this very short game not the best game uh, we had in this vehicle uh, but a good highlight of how do you want to wait uh, to do some damage? So let me take you to the post game stats uh, and then I'll show you the second game because this one was quite short. So post battle statistic, 6.6 thousand damage, nothing to uh, write home about, a little bit of profit, but don't expect to make profit on this vehicle. This is not uh, the point of it. And so as I mentioned, focus on uh, your improved aiming because you cannot miss a shot. Uh, if you're not sure about hitting a shot, it's probably worth not taking it. This is what I used to do uh, with this vehicle. And it gave us quite a good result. Uh, we've averaged over 4,000 damage in each game uh, of all the battles that we had uh, in the vehicle. But let me take you to the second game, uh, which is going to be even more crazy when it comes to the score. Let's go. Hey guys, as I was making a recording of the post-game stats of the first battle, I have uh, had an idea. I don't know if you know, but I used to have a YouTube channel in the past where I recorded games without commentary and I found that on my old channel I have an old recording of this vehicle while it was still in the game with an Ace Tanker gameplay. So after this one, I'm going to uh, get the old video and uh, post it as a third game. This is going to be Waffentrager Auf E100 back in the day in the old game. I, I can't wait to see it. I don't remember it, so we're going to go through it live. Uh, it's going to be a trip down uh, the memory lane for sure. But we are in this game now. So let's have a chat about Stujanki maybe. Because 
oh my, they have ruined my map. I really liked uh, this map. It was quite well, I mean, it's not perfect. No map in World of Tanks is perfect. The, the, the biggest issue of World of Tanks is, I think, maps, apart from balance and premium tanks. But what I mean is this position is so bad. <laughs> You are going to see a couple of reasons why. So, we commit, they commit, and this is now a death match. So, I look at the gorilla and I think to myself, okay, I'm going to drive over so I have a better shot. Uh, I am a tall vehicle, uh, so it's quite easy for me to hit him. And now the gorilla is dead. One, two, three, that's four, and that is five. 2,200 damage right there. This is the reason why this vehicle needed to be removed from the game. Not because it's powerful, but because it just breaks the game. It's not fun to those receiving uh, those shots. It's just not. There is no defense. The intra clip reload is too short. The alpha damage is too high. The accuracy is too great. And the penetration is too massive. Everything about this thing is just wrong. Ah... So, back to the game we have, 2200 damage and so much more to do. There used to be a wonderful crossfire uh, from here into the, um, let's call it, the destroyed buildings. And this is now filled with buildings overall, uh, makes it quite difficult to move around, but I have my eyes on the TVP and I think to myself, can I drive up here and be safe from the usual TD shelf? I should be fine. So I do exactly this. Even with the turbo, I am not very fast, but this is enough because one, and before this guy can react to what's going on, he's dead. So I put two in and then I have the mouse fully aimed, only then clicked, fully aimed, click, and then fully aimed, clicked. Last one didn't connect, but always fully aimed before click. This is pretty much the takeaway of it. And as for the main topic of today's video, you really want to focus in your auto loaders and auto reloaders too to make sure that when you decide to make a play you have more than one shell to deliver that was exactly the case here every time i make a move i make sure i can do more than one shot of damage and in this situation i had five in both occasions uh, that's why five shells is uh, pretty much a broken idea. Uh, remember, back in the day, it used to have six. <laughs> I can't wait to see that video from uh, the past, if it's uh, the old, old Waffentrager, or is it the nerfed one, <laughs> which was still broken. But uh, we're going to see it together right after we finish that. Okay, I saw the tree knocked down. See, use that uh, view. You want to zoom out, it gives you this uh, bird's eye view. It's phenomenal. I love this add-on to the game, and I use it all the time. So... I saw the tree fall down behind behind those buildings. I uh, pressed T to make my team aware that I, there is somebody there. I don't know if they take notice of it, but it's it's. I do my best to give my team as much as uh, information as possible without spamming too much. Uh, even though I do spam sometimes, just a human after all, right? So what we see here is that the AV killed the STB. Mm, not the best, but hey, AV, AV, can I have a shot? Not quite. Okay, never mind. So I reverse in, my turret's at the back. Uh, you have the same situation when you play your um, Waffentrager of E Panzer IV. Uh, I had to risk the early shot uh, because I knew I won't have a chance to put uh, another one in if I don't. So Projector got, sh got hit once, and I think about the VZ, but I know that if I move back more... Okay, one, easy gonna... Okay. Ah, see, when I mentioned that the autoloaders usually trade some um, features of them to have the, the cap capability of being an, an, an autoloader is that VZ, he has a very uh, weak upper plate. That second shell went right through his upper plate when it was angled. This is how Wargaming is trying to balance things out. So VZ is not very well armored, but it has an autoloader. Of course, they broke it with Minotauro. Uh, but hey, what can we do, right? What do we see here is I want to get an angle on somebody, but my team is not really doing much and uh, my fingers are itchy. I really think to myself, like, I want to go, but 
can I go? Uh, so I just drive, put my front uh, slightly behind the, uh, the buildings to see if I get spotted. And oh, I did get spotted. 8.36 from the Fox 155. So I align myself straight with the indicator where I was shot from. And I make sure that there are buildings between me and the Fox. I don't want to get the second shot. I think the intro clip is like five seconds. So I don't want another one. And Fosh killed the E100. This is not looking great all of a sudden. Uh, it, to me, it looks like we're winning on hit points, but I don't have information about my team up north. So I'm a little concerned here. Okay, what can I do to win this game? Because for me, priority is victory, always. What can I do in my auto loader? Well, my speciality is ambushing, but TVP is running. Super Conqueror is sitting at full HP, still not really playing the game, just trying to snipe. Like, there used to be a crossfire there. So he's probably trying to find a shot. There are no shots. Uh, so he's just sitting there doing nothing because he doesn't know how to proceed. And the LV in the bushes is not helping because another toxic vehicle, uh, something you can't push. I'm a one shot to him, so I can't push. Um, Projector 65, I can't spot. Uh, he goes, LV gets spotted, so I drive forward. Maybe I can put one in. Yes, I can. And he is dead. Wonderful. I think we're back in the game. Okay, Projecto shooting at Super Conqueror. I saw the damage, um, you know, the shells bouncing off of him. So I approach carefully and okay, there's the VZ. I wonder if he's going to fall back, but um, not, in, not in a best position here. I know the Fosh is still out there somewhere. Uh, I don't want to get a hit by him because I'm a two shot for him. And this is not looking great because my hands are tied. I really want to help the Super Conqueror because he all of a sudden he decided he has decided to make a play now. And I think to myself, I can't. I just can't push this. So I line myself in such a way that I don't get spotted when I uh, escape and I have to go. <sighs> it's difficult to make that kind of a decision. I go on a reload because I know I won't be firing anytime soon. Uh, and unfortunately I get hit by, by the mouse, which is still in the original position, but you have to make those decisions sometimes. This is unpushable. 260, one shot just drives forward, dies for nothing. Super Conqueror, one shot just lost all his hit points and now he's dead. Ah. Both the 260 and the Super Conqueror should have fallen back, not drive forward. They made this map so awful, uh, especially the south now. I mean, in the north, you can get shot by the artillery inside of buildings now. <sighs> Whatever. But the south, the south, the south. It is really, really hard to push the south. There is so much cover. And it's so flat, this is pretty much uh, unpushable, uh, at least in this scenario. If we had a light tank, maybe, but hey, okay. So I put one in the Fosh uh, and I put two on, two on, second one in the Fosh. He fired, so I know I have one shot more to give, but mm, what can I do? Okay, I know that the uh, Fosh is shooting heat, so I position uh, myself at the building between uh, me and him. So if he if he fires, he's going to shoot the building and he's not going to be uh, able to go through it. But I don't quite manage to pull the trigger on the AMX. Seven and a half thousand damage. Pause. Uh, I don't think that was winnable, to be honest. Not with the vehicle I had and not with the team I had. Sometimes uh, you really uh, have to accept the fact that you can't win every battle. Uh, so two defeats for you today, unfortunately. Uh, but this is a highlight of how do you ambush and how do you use your autoloader capability to the best of your ability. Now, let's go to the old battle and see how the game used to look like. Let's go. And the post-game stats, so 7.5, uh, nothing really. This is not about this result and uh, this is not about the Waffen Trigger. This is about the ambushing of the vehicles and uh, how they've ruined my boy. Uh, this is the junkie. So, uh, do you guys even like post battle stats? Uh, I don't really know how do you feel about those. So, let me know what you think and uh, let me take you to the past. Okay, so this is the game. The resolution is horrible. The map is no longer in the game. I don't even remember what's the name of it. 
Let me know in the comments if you remember. So what do we see here? On each team, two Waffentrager of AUF E100s. I see I'm using some kind of a mod pack uh, for the uh, interface. I think most of us used to do that in the past. I see I'm still using XVM. I don't do this now because I find it quite toxic and negative for my gameplay. Okay, so what do we see here? I am now reloaded. So it's been 57 seconds for the reload since from the start of the game. I have hard to see with the resolution five shows. So this is uh, the vehicle after the nerf. Okay, okay. So I have three shows in. What do we see? What else is in the game? Uh, ah, Lorraine 40T. Tier 9 medium tank. Do you guys remember this? It's up there on my team. Uh, what else is there? AMX CDC. People were still playing it. <laughs> you don't see many of them nowadays. And other than that, AMX 1390 is a tier 8, not tier 9. So this is a bit later on. And T54 lightweight is tier 8. Okay, this is, it's, hard, it's hard to me to pinpoint when exactly was this game recorded. Okay, so I am on the reload, and what do we see here? AMX 50B, LTTB, T34, uh, E100. See, back in the day, no hardening modules, nothing like that. So TDs could didn't have anything for the uh, improving of aim. So the best uh, module you could do if you had bad aim time is the gun laying drive. Nobody does that now. At least nobody should be doing this now. Okay, and I am almost reloaded. Now, looks like I was still looking around quite a lot. I wasn't that great of a player back then. I think back then I was probably about a, oh, like nowadays, I would never make that peak uh, nowadays. Uh, but back then, yeah. ah, see, remember back then also, you only, you could only use your repair kit and your first aid kit once a battle. So if you have used up your repair kit, you could no longer um, use it again. <laughs> that would, it's so, so strange to see. I see I'm using the Camonet and Optics, <laughs> a real pro gamer setup. And uh, I see the space bar for the fire extinguisher. I think, I'm not sure if this is automatic fire extinguisher or manual. Uh, don't quite remember, but I remember that for the majority of the time, uh, all the way, uh, up, all the way up, I think 2018, I never used food. So the first 45,000 games that I've played uh, were used with no premium consumables. I only started to use premium consumables uh, after I have bought all the tier 10 tanks uh, in the game. Because my focus was, uh, was to get all the tanks and only then uh, have this freedom of playing uh, at max level. Also, my first 8,000 games... Oh, they've crossed already. Bad for them. One shot. Oh, bad shot. Uh, I think I think I'm better now than I was back then. Uh, the aim time seems to be... Oh, I ah, I think I, I thought he's going to die, but he didn't. Okay. Okay, make make it count. Make it count. So, okay, I fixed my tracks. I'll aim, yeah. I was... Oh! Oh, that's... Oh, what's not? What now? T71 has an auto loader. <laughs> okay, he put three into me. See, I have used my uh, repairs for my tracks. I can no longer repair my gun. How stupid that was. It's... Oh, crazy. Oh, by the way, I am in a platoon. I wonder who's that. Maybe we can see later uh, in the kill feed. Which on one of my friends, I wonder if we're still in touch. Uh, it's been quite a while. And many people uh, left the game uh, since then, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I've, I've left the game a couple of times. Uh, I think it's healthy to take a break every now and then. I always uh, take a couple of weeks or sometimes even a month uh, off of the game every year. Uh, because I this is my favorite game of all time. But it is quite uh, toxic, and uh, I get really angry sometimes. So okay, I'm reloaded, and I put one into him, two into him. I think I have reloaded now. Okay, okay. so that's Godzilla. I don't really remember. Sorry if if you're watching. <laughs> or maybe that happened in the game. Uh, hard to say. But what do we have here? Does it? Uh, okay, so six thousand damage. Uh, artillery has minus one kills. Okay, so the friendly fire is on. Oh, I, I have to, the game has changed so much. I honestly like the way the game has changed. 
but it's so so far from perfect it, it, it's it hurts me to say this because this is my favorite game of all time but this game is really bad honestly objectively this is a bad video game but I like it. <laughs> it it's, there's nothing I can do about the fact that my favorite game is objectively bad. It's toxic, it's badly balanced, it's not very well thought out. Uh, the maps, are more, most of the maps are horrible. Uh, the situational awareness of this guy is also horrible, but that is to my benefit. Okay, 6.3 thousand damage. Uh, oh, oh, post battle starts. <laughs> Let's pause here and see what can we see. Uh, the garage, okay, the garage is quite new. I have 76 gold, I have 36,000 credits. Ah, 2000, Monday 27th of July, 2015. Oh my gosh. I have three days of premium account. <laughs> Crazy. What tanks did I have in my garage back then? So yeah, all the tier 10s by the looks of it. My W and 8 at 2.4, 5. 13 battles out of 29, 44% win ratio, average tier 8.4. Oh, this is, this is really strange. You know what? I have, I think, around 80 of those videos uh, from my old channel, back where I used to do no commentary. I think I'm going to uh, start doing this. As a second battle, uh, just for your enjoyment, uh, you can watch it, you can skip it, entirely up to you. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the idea? Uh, would you like to see more of this uh, blast from the past kind of things? I have plenty uh, recorded. They are not going to be great. <clears throat> Sorry, resolution, but uh, it's, uh, you know, something to enjoy. Uh, yeah, let's have a chat in the comment section and I'll see you there. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see some more, check out one of these two. And if you're waiting for fresh content, stay tuned. I'll see you soon.